happy Vlogmas Day 5. <laughs> I don't know why I'm singing that. I'm in a particularly good mood. You can tell the coffee from Totoro has kicked in. I just fired up my Tuscany candle, gingerbread candle. It smells really good. It's early morning here, so I don't want to have to extinguish it to leave. But um, yeah, I recommend it. Again, have not had a bad Tuscany candle. But uh, anyways, today's video, I am going to talk about something you all have requested, and that is what sort of foods are there or what kind of diet is there that would potentially be anti-aging or good for preventing wrinkles? Is there an anti-wrinkle diet? What kind of foods are there out there? More, more and more of you, uh, a greater number of you verbalized enthusiasm for this after my hair, skin, and nail supplement video. So I'm not going to talk too much about supplements in today's video. Check that one out if you if you missed it. Suffice it to say, supplements are you know not regulated, and therefore there's a lot of variability from supplement to supplement. By and large, the data to support the use of different supplements is limited, and uh, so I am hesitant to recommend supplements or um, you know. I would I would uh, proceed cautiously with the whole supplement industry thing. But what about foods and diet? We do have some evidence that certain dietary patterns, certain patterns of food intake and nutrient intake from foods can potentially, I say I emphasize potentially, can potentially um, impact skin aging. Things that contribute to skin aging are just time going by. Um, Age-related decline of protein synthesis and uh, just general physiology, our skin barrier uh, becomes less rigorous as we get older, leading to dryness more readily. These are all, these are all age-related changes that occur and will occur in everyone. It's just an inevitable part of, of aging. Uh, but you can slow the rate by which those accumulative changes occur by keeping in mind uh, your sun exposure habits as I've emphasized at length here and using a broad, broad spectrum sunscreen. By and large, the majority of aging to the skin is due to, is due to ultraviolet light that we're exposed to that really, really ages our skin quite a bit. But we have some evidence that a diet rich in antioxidant dense foods can potentially slow the rate of skin aging and put off some of the signs of skin aging like wrinkling, discoloration, sagging, and uh, skin cancers. Antioxidant rich foods include things like plants, vegetables, um, coffees and teas are a good source of antioxidants as well in food sources. And we do have some evidence that in populations that have a um, high consumption of green tea, green tea is rich in polyphenols, that uh, that can help potentially to slow the rate of skin aging and wrinkling. There was a study looking at Celtic, Greek, and Swedish people and People in those groups that consumed diets high in vegetables, legumes, and olive oil, all antioxidant rich food, all foods rich in antioxidants and polyphenols, that those individuals had uh, a lower amount of skin wrinkles. In that same study, however, they also showed that individuals who consumed diets rich in meats, dairy, and butter, not olive oil, but animal fat butter, had more wrinkles, suggesting that um, a plant-rich diet uh, could be protective against wrinkling, whereas an animal fat-rich diet could set the stage for, for worsening skin aging. But one of the things you have to bear in mind when hearing studies like that and hearing findings like that is it's actually really, really hard to do diet studies at all. I mean, first of all, how, how are you going to reasonably obtain somebody's dietary history from their entire lifetime? It's really difficult to do that in a rigorous way. How do you know that early on in life they didn't eat a certain diet that set them up for, for either benefit or failure later on down the road? So you can't control that. And then 
Diet is, can be one of those things that is guilty by association. So for example, in the case of this study, one might think, or one, one potential explanation is that it's not necessarily the foods that made those individuals have less wrinkles, but maybe there was something about their lifestyle. You can imagine, for example, that someone who um, works you can imagine that someone whose occupation perhaps is as a rancher and they are outside um, working in, as a rancher outdoors in the sun, they have more sun exposure and perhaps as a result of their profession, they consume a diet that is uh, leans more towards animal-based foods, meats, butter, etc., less on plants. And perhaps that is why they have more aging, just because they're out in the sun more, which we already know, and it has nothing to do with their diet. Their diet is just guilty by association. There was another study looking at the diets of 4,000 women, and they found that um, of those women, women who consumed diets that had foods rich in vitamin C, vitamin A, and, um, and potassium had less wrinkling than than women who had diets that had um, less of those less of those nutrients. And these are all present in their food, not as supplements. I want to emphasize that. This study was just looking at specific vitamins within foods rather than as supplements. And it was also shown that a diet that was high in fats and carbs was associated with more wrinkles. I already mentioned green tea, but what about coffee? The studies on coffee are kind of all over the place. There was one Japanese study that showed that coffee consumption was associated with less, um, less dispigmentation or, or hyperpigmentation related to, related to actinic damage or sun damage. However, there were two other studies in different populations, I believe Europeans, not Japanese, that showed that coffee had no effect on wrinkles or photo damage or signs of skin aging. So the jury's kind of out on coffee. We also have another study, however, that showed that coffee drinkers seem to have a lower risk of melanoma. Um, and then we also have another study recently, as I mentioned in my rosacea and diet video, that coffee drinkers seem to have a lower, lower incidence of rosacea. So the jury's still out on coffee, but <laughs> I ain't stopping it. <laughs> For the sake of humanity, I will not stop drinking coffee. I, I love it and I need it. Uh, but obviously everything in moderation when it comes to coffee, I will say that. Excessive caffeine consumption is not good on any body system. Uh, so limiting it to one to two cups a day uh, is prudent. And if you're sensitive to caffeine, you know, avoid it. <laughs> It's also worth noting that individuals who consume beta carotene rich foods like carrots, for example, um, they can actually raise their minimal erythematous dose. And the minimal erythematous dose, or MED, is a measure of the minimal amount of UV exposure required to begin to elicit damage in the skin. And that damage is subsequently gonna set the stage for actinic damage and sun damage and aging of the skin. So by consuming diets rich in beta carotene at least and potentially plant-derived uh, antioxidants, this can uh, lower, lower the, the amount of damage perhaps from UV exposure. We have, our skin has its own antioxidant system, but that becomes overwhelmed very, very quickly and very, very easily. And so potentially replenishing them through food sources is, is another measure to further, further lessen the burden of, of sun damage that we are encountering on a day-to-day -day basis, day-to-day -day basis. That in combi combination with sunscreen, sun protective measures, avoiding prolonged sun exposure are probably the most prudent things that you can do to protect the skin from aging. Outside of antioxidants and their likely benefit and consumption in foods for kind of an anti-aging effect, it's definitely worthwhile to discuss the effect of high sugar diets. Consuming too much sugar is assumed to accelerate skin aging by formation of something called advanced glycation end products. Very early in my channel, I had a video on kind of anti-aging um, skincare tips, and I talked about advanced glycation end products. Advanced glycation end products are basically when sugar binds onto a protein or a lipid in, in our skin, for example, and makes this 
like kind of cement type substance that is very, very damaging and um, can impair and break up and disrupt our skin, our deep skin matrix, our dermal matrix, and, and ultimately leads to leads to wrinkle formation. So sugar in our bloodstream binds to proteins and in effect glycates them. These then, these are harmful, they deposit and get stuck in our dermal matrix and lead to wrinkles. Furthermore, when you, furthermore, in the presence of ultraviolet light, advanced glycation end products deposited in the deeper layers of the skin, their outcome and their negative consequence on skin aging is further augmented and it can be quite damaging to the skin. So uh, and a diet that promotes formation of advanced glycation end products or ages in combination with excessive sun, sun exposure really sets the stage for accelerated photo aging and aging of the skin and wrinkles. There are two ways that advanced glycation end products uh, form in the body. One is endogenous advanced glycation end products, meaning you consume foods that are sugary and raise blood sugar, and the blood sugar deposits on your proteins in the skin, forming uh, advanced glycation end products. You can also deposit in proteins in other areas of the body, like our um, vasculature, and uh, set the stage for cardiovascular disease, atherosclerosis, etc. The other type of advanced glycation end product, though, is an exogenous advanced glycation product, meaning you consume an already formed advanced glycation end product that then deposits in your skin and in your body. In the diet, advanced glycation end products come from foods that are cooked at very high temperatures, sugary foods in particular that are cooked at high temperatures, smoking and frying um, results in the formation of advanced glycation end products. Probably one of the most aging foods that you could eat as far as consuming an advanced glycation end product, sorry Texans, is a smoked meat. Um, the, the combination of the sugary barbecue sauce and the smoking of the meat that is, that's a double-edged sword of advanced glycation products, and then you're eating that outside <laughs> at a barbecue. I know, I'm a Debbie Downer, but that is, that is aging on a plate right there. So we have good, we, we have good reason to believe that uh, diets high in sugary-based foods um, and smoked meats do contribute to wrinkling and aging of the skin, as well as a host of other medical problems like cardiovascular disease, diabetes. I think people always want to ask me about, do I think a vegan diet is anti-aging or um, is that something to consider for anti-aging? And there is no evidence for, to support a vegan diet for anything. Uh, you know, if you look at the world's population, the percentage of individuals following a vegan diet is quite low. So you can imagine that we're not going to really get a good sense of any uh, established benefits of a vegan diet. However, vegan diets that are rich in plant-based foods, uh, you know, you're likely getting the benefit from that. But that's not to say that other diets like the Mediterranean diet, which includes modest amounts of animal proteins like fish, for example, are somehow aging or bad. And in fact, we have evidence to support the benefit of Mediterranean diet in that it is, it is rich in antioxidants, it's rich in olive oil, and has modest consumption of, of animal proteins. But a low protein diet, many people have verbalized concerns, can a low protein diet contribute to aging? Low protein is pretty, pretty uncommon, <laughs> um, very uncommon, but protein deficient states uh, can impair wound healing. Uh, we need protein to regenerate collagen in the skin and close up a wound. So it would make logical sense that protein deficient states would also accelerate the rate of skin aging and and uh, just loss of collagen and suppleness in the skin. And that, would make, that would make some sense. Um, so there's a lot of enthusiasm for taking collagen peptides to boost collagen production as we get older um, and our body makes less protein overall. There is a small amount of evidence in support of uh, collagen supplements and um, bioactive collagen peptides specifically in boosting skin suppleness, firmness, improving the appearance of wrinkles. I reviewed this in my supplements video. It's quite modest, uh, the evidence for, for to support its use. And the warning that I gave in that video is, you know, supplements are not regulated for safety or efficacy. So I'm always pretty nervous to recommend or talk about supplements with you guys. 
So, you know, talk about it with your treating healthcare provider. For me personally, supplements, collagen supplements, there are, I guess there are some vegan sources of synthetic collagen. I haven't really looked into that. Um, but the collagen peptides are not vegan. Um, as far as those of you who are not vegan who want to take a collagen supplement, logic would follow that marine sources are probably more bioavailable. They're more readily absorbed. Uh, marine sources meaning those that come from ground up fish scales. Um, as opposed to as opposed to bovine bovine sources, but again the research on that is still pretty preliminary. And as I said, I'm always pretty um, resistant or nervous to recommend supplements given their lack of regulation and you know monitoring for safety and efficacy. You know you can imagine though as I as I alluded to earlier in this video that studying diet and studying supplements and the outcome on something like aging that occurs over years over somebody's entire lifetime it's really hard to do that um, objectively and without bias there's a lot of bias in studies like that no matter how how rigorous you try and be you have um, you know participants have recall bias uh, they're more likely to, to re remember uh, certain foods Perhaps uh, certain populations maybe are more likely to, to do other things that influence their behavior while eating plants or while not eating plants that could impact their rate of aging. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe some diets actually affect sleep quality and, you know, it's hard to say for sure. There are a lot of confounding factors in diet studies and supplement studies and nutrition studies. But suffice it to say, consuming, um, <laughs> consuming veggies and fruits seems to be helpful for skin health, for overall health, for lowering rates of cardiovascular disease. There is good evidence for a Mediterranean diet as far as longevity and cardiovascular health as well as skin health. And, uh, you know, while I don't want to sound like the vegan, vegan agenda here because it's not, uh, there is evidence that limiting uh, the consumption of meat and dairy and animal derived fats does have uh, some potential benefit in reducing the rate of skin aging. So anyways, that is everything I can answer for you guys on diet and anti-aging. <laughs> uh, it's interesting and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.